Back to another episode of the Sable Weeby Show. special guest tonight please welcome for the first time musician david Choi. thanks for having me i, I was thanks gonna sing along but, oh, yeah, yeah, but was, it was so I beautiful pressure you. it was so beautiful thank you i was just like oh this is nice I was looking forward to. I was looking forward to this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, uh, yeah, man. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta show love to the other Korean homies of that are doing their thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so shout out to Justin. You mentioned Justin. Yep, Justin Chun. Shout out to Justin Chun. What's up, Justin? My neighbor. He's your neighbor. Kind of like he lives like a couple miles away. <laughs> so he, uh, yeah. Have you seen Gook? I ha- He wrote a part of it at my house. Dude, mm-hmm. amazing movie. Yeah, it was. It was awesome. I have a song in it too. You do. I do at the end. Yep. Yeah. When she's dancing, when the yeah yeah in the fire and mm-hmm. oh yep. my god, I think you, you just almost gave me goosebumps. You just, you gave, gave, me away, goosebumps. You just gave away the. the it's, a, it's okay. The well, we can edit that the... out. But look, but, but <laughs> you did kidding. give me goosebumps. <laughs> nice, dude. That was a beautiful movie. Oh th- yeah, I mean, yeah. I I, it was Justin. How did y'all meet? And... I just I'm, I think I met him through just social media. Mm-hmm. Um. I don't remember exa- we we actually talked about this the other day. Mm-hmm. I don't really remember how we met, uh, wow. but it was probably through social media, just mutual friends. You know, and entertainment's yeah. small here, like in LA. As far as the Asians? Asian community, <laughs> I mean, I know almost all the Asian entertainers. And you, you know who's killing it hard right now? A female. Je- Aquafina. <laughs> yeah, of <laughs> I course. didn't even have to say it. Of course. Shout out to Aquafina. Mm-hmm. The whole Asian community's mm-hmm. proud. Yes. Killing it, and there's a new guy, Simu, who just who's going to be the first Marvel superhero. Shout out! Can we give him a shout out? Shout I out! I think to we C- can. Simu, Simu, sorry, not Simu. Shout out to Simu. Simu, what? He's going to be a superhero? Yeah, he's going to be. Our, the, the, is that historical? That's never happened, right? Nope. Is Mulan? Mulan? Mulan kind of. Nah, that doesn't not count. Really right? Yeah. Yeah. You see, there's a. I just saw on Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I, I there's was gonna a guy watch it, who yeah. the Bruce Lee who played the dude that plays Bruce Lee. Yeah, amazing. I thought they his the accent, imposed him in the. No, no, it's really an actor. Oh wow, I didn't know that. Craig, did he do a good job? Yeah, he was great. He, dude, I'm telling you, he had the accent like the way he talks and everything. How does he talk? I can't. I can't. I'm not an actor. <laughs> I, I, don't wanted, even I, just I don't even want to. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to try. <laughs> flow like water i don't hey, that was, I have no, 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 no that's bad. not bad um so i was gonna like i have like this this have you seen the show it's all over the place the, the cbu yeah, yeah, yeah of course okay, yeah okay. i've seen a few episodes we yeah. got so much to talk about mm-hmm. you make beautiful music i want to definitely showcase that mm-hmm. um where, how did you get involved? Where are you from, first of all? I'm from uh, Orange County. I was born in Anaheim. Oh, that's Grew what's up. Grew up in up. Garden Grove. Oh, okay. Garden Grove represent. Yeah, Garden Grove. Um, West Garden Grove. Did you go to University of Irvine? I did not. Okay. I, I actually didn't go to university. Oh, you didn't? No. Well, that's cool. You didn't miss out on much. Yeah. I don't, it's a lot of learn debt. From life. Yeah. You, just, you know, student loans. We're yeah. still paying them off. <laughs> um, how did you get into music? Uh, my dad's side of the family is very musical. Mm-hmm. I grew up in a musical family. My mom's side is very artistic. Uh, I, I grew up in a, uh, my, my parents owned a music store in Garden Grove. Real, can we, can we, uh, it's called can, Grace. Can it we was, do a commercial for it right now? <laughs> yeah. Go to Grace Music, no longer in Garden Grove, in yeah, Tustin. Go to Grace Music in Tustin, California. Yep. Look it up. On Google. If you want to buy... Uh, Go ahead. Keep going. Violins and cellos. Violins. 
cellos. Cellos. Keep going. Uh, auto harps. Auto harps. <laughs> <laughs> no, going. no, for real. My keep dad going. is. For a, real, dude, he'll love this. Let's my keep dad going. is a Korean, like an old, old you know, Korean American oh, yeah, immigrant. Yeah. He's like sixty years old. Mm-hmm. He's actually the world champion auto harpist. Dude, and, that's uh, who could say that. And the auto harp is like a traditional folk folk instrument. instrument from the south. What's his name? His name's Ray Choi. Shout out to my man Ray <laughs> Choi. <laughs> hey, Killing Dad. it. Killing it in the auto harp. In the game. Auto, auto harp <laughs> world. Yeah. Can we plug the the store the, the shop again? He does. It's on YouTube. Yeah, so go to YouTube, YouTube type auto harp. I mean Ray, Ray Choi. Choi. Yeah, auto harp. You'll see it. Yeah. Cool. That's amazing. Yeah. And then what about your mom? My mom, uh, she just helped run the business. She's kind of like yeah, the head yeah. of our household. Yeah. Making yeah, sure yeah. that we don't um, yeah. live on the street. I hear you. You you have they so they're uh Korean American? They are Korean. They were from Korea. They immigrated here. Same My mom went mine. to high school yeah. at uh not too far from here. Uh, LA High. Mm-hmm, it was mm-hmm, called. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're practically kin. Yeah. I'm you're a choi. My mm-hmm. my cousins are choi's. Okay. I'm Bach. I'm a Bach Park, but they changed oh. it. You know. So I just learned this because I just went to visit my folks in Gilbert. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're explaining Korean uh, surnames and pa- Bach is really they changed it to Park, then oh. to Park. Right. So even dumbfounded is a Bach. Yeah, like Bach, oh, okay. Bach, Bach, Bach yeah, Dynasty, yeah, yeah. Bach Dynasty. Same thing with Choi's. Mm-hmm. Kim is Gim. Gim. Yeah. Gim. Choi is Che. Che. I don't know how you go from Che, che to, to Choi. Choi. <laughs> I feel like Che is easier to say. Yeah, Che right? is like way. It's S-C-H-E. Yeah. As opposed to Choi. It's yeah. Like, did they ever, know. did they ever, um, it's kind of weird. Uh, pick on you, call, did they ever say, hey, Choi, Choi boy. boy. Yep. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. my cousin Andy Choi and Paul Choi, shout out to them. Yep. They used to make fun of him in uh, middle school and high school. Hey, actually, Choi boy. I actually liked it. I thought it was unique. It is Until unique. I realized Dude, I wasn't the only Choi in the world. And I was like, every single Choi that I know was called Choi boy growing up. Dude, Choi, that's something to be proud of. If you're a Choi, yeah. hold on, let's break it down. <laughs> Kim, Kim. Kim, Choi. Choi Kim, Kim. 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 Choi. On. Park. Park. park pa- Lee. Lee. Lee See, is just Lee, Lee. Yeah, yeah, Lee. Yeah. But even that's E or it's not Lee, right? That's so, true, yeah. It's something else. It's so complicated. I don't even, yeah. Yeah. No, it's just interesting because I yeah. don't know much. Have you been to Korea, dude? I have, yeah. When's the last time you went? I go. I think I go about once a year for the past 10 years or so. It's a trip, isn't it? It's fun. It's, dude, it's interesting. a trip. Though. Yeah, it is. It's like a different world. My mom is obsessed. There's a collective Korean k-pop like dude like b t something bts BTS. she will not stop talking about these people really she has articles and she keeps she's obsessed with them and she goes you have to be more like them and like because she wants to be a k-pop star well she's obsessed with one like there's two that she has you could tell she has like a crushes on these young boys is she is she she's married? Old. No, my mom is old. Like, she's a ho- how many? How many? Yeah, grandma. How old, how old is she, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, in her 70s. Wow. Yeah. And she loves the, the young K-pop boys. I don't even know how. I lost track. You remember the Wonder Girls? Yes. Yeah. My brother, you know my brother. I mean, brother. I don't know them. Yeah, but like, you know um, you yeah. know my brother. He's a comedian. Mm-hmm, Bobby, yeah. He did a music video for them, and he had an extra plane ticket. He goes, dude, you want to come to Korea with me, dude? And I go... Hell of course, yeah. yeah. First class. I met, have you heard of JYP? Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's, I'm, we're going to educate them. JYP is like the puff daddy of- Yes, of Korea. Korea. Mm-hmm. I ended up meeting that dude. Was he nice? He, nah, he's pretty intense. <laughs> a pretty intense guy. Really? Wow. In in like a good way or a ba- like a- Just, he, he, he's like Puff Daddy. He's a, just a hustler. Oh, okay. Uh, he's entrepreneur type. Entrepreneur, yeah. millionaire. Wow. Um, for those people who don't know, a lot of these K-pop, they groom them from a very young age. Mm-hmm. And it, a lot of them is like they just match kids up. And yeah. they, they live in dormitories. Yep. Or, 
It's true. Do you know much about? I mean, I don't know much about it. I mean, I hear I've being in the music industry. I've I've heard a lot of those types of stories. I've mm-hmm. I've I know some people who were kind of also groomed uh, like in the, that system. Like, give me some. But examples. they left. Uh, oh, they left. Like, yeah. Like, like, like what do you mean? There's what like they a do? girl. Uh, I mean, I I don't want to say groomed because I don't really know to the extent, but uh, like Megan Lee, who's mm-hmm. you know Asian, mm-hmm. like a Korean American mm-hmm. mm-hmm. singer out here. She's she's kind of you know, kind of was in that system for a little mm-hmm, bit, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but she got out. And I think in time. So what do you mean? You're making it seem like Scientology. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, I, I'm sorry. It just, <laughs> you know, it's like the polygamous group. Maybe like, it they could, got out. I mean, you know what? <laughs> yeah. We don't know. It, it, it could be. We never know. I, mean, I just know they're not keeping all their cash. They got to, they're chi- not, they got to chip yeah. off so-and-so yep. JYP in, and, in America. Mm-hmm. You know, your standard agent, manager gets what 10 to 15 percent right maybe 20 percent yeah in korea i heard it's normal to take 50 percent 50 50 if that's average but they take that what they do is they take that money and they reinvest it into that that uh person you know dude you're spreading knowledge right now keep i love it i love yeah. what you're doing right now i'm making all this up no no you're kidding. not no, making it up. No, no, it, no, no it's true like they take the management companies take close to 50 percent uh why the, I, it's ridiculous. I think it's because they have teams. In Korea, it's all about having oh, a team. Marketing. And marketing, ph- photographer, makeup. Why do they all, the dudes, why do they always have like eyeliner? Like, why? I'm not, no, I don't want to enter this. Yeah. But they kind of like demasculate, it's what it's called, demasculinity. Or yeah, yeah. They kind of demasculinitize. I like that word. Uh, Demasculin- de- yeah, tenet- like demasculinitize. demasculinitize. That should be um, a word. The 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 male perform. Like, why do they have to they do, do that? Why can't they just be just be themselves? That's or? true. I I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Ten. Now a word from our sponsor. So my name is Lil Ray. I just teleported here from a purgatory planet with my robot named Beep. All right. You might be asking yourselves where the hell I sleep at at night on that goddamn desolate planet. I'll tell you right now. I sleep on a comfortable purple mattress. All right. Purple mattress uses brand new materials that was developed by an actual goddamn rocket scientist. All right. Right now you get a hundred night risk free. A trial. If you're not fully satisfied, you can return your mattress for a full refund, backed up by a 10-year warranty, free shipping and returns. You're going to love Purple Mattress, folks. You get a free Purple Pillow with the purchase of mattress today. I wish you could feel that. Feels like a bed of gummy bears. <laughs> Woohoo! That's in addition to a free great gifts they're offering site-wide. Just text S-T-E-E-B-E-E to 84888. The only way to get the free pillow is to text Stevie. S-T-E-E-B-E-E to 84888. Get your purple mattress today. And we're back. Okay. We're back. So, like, we're talking about demasculinitizing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't uh, don't want to, like, get too deep into the k-pop thing without yeah. because they they're the fans are really crazy oh they might so i don't do think to, do you think one of their fans might stumble across the stevie weeby show perhaps at 13 minutes and 18 <laughs> seconds and say <laughs> okay well you know what they're fine the way they are <laughs> maybe they, i mean yeah. i'm i'm just not really it's into fine makeup and all that so i'm not either i maybe because just, we grew up in america we're not yeah i'm like yeah. no what well, the thing is i I'm I'm fine with it, yeah. but I feel like a lot of them are just so like each group seems like the same kind of makeup. Like yeah. like, like as far as there's yeah. gonna be five girls at least make, or five yeah. guys, mm-hmm. they're gonna look perfect in their face. Exactly the same. Perfect ch- a nose, yep. perfect chin, sankapu, the the yep. eye operation to make yep. their eyes like perfect, like yep. like dolls. Yeah. And like I'm like when I listen to your music, I'm not even looking at you. I'm actually this is the thing. I listen. I listen with my ears. I don't listen with my eyes. And yeah. I think that the younger generation they listen with their eyes. I know exactly. <laughs> no, of their I, ears. Does exact, that make any sense? Absolutely. Yeah. Like I when I hear Dennis and Kane, which is a mm-hmm. Korean rapper from a group called Typical Cats, I'm mm-hmm. not thinking. 
I'm not even looking at him. I, I didn't even know like. he was Korean. Yeah, wow. I didn't even. I thought there were three black dudes, but yeah. it was one of them. Quell's a white dude. Uh, Quasar's a black guy, and Dennison Kane's like us. He's a Korean mm-hmm. dude. Mm-hmm. But when I listen to it, I'm like. I'm not, I can't, you can't make it out. I'm listening. I'm actually listening yeah. and not judging it before I, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But I think that with that, it's like, it's mostly on the look. Does that make any sense? Absolutely. Like, yeah, f- absolutely. It's like, yeah. it's like a, the package that they're trying to sell. Yeah. Um, it's working though. You know what? It totally works. It works. I mean, five, 400 million views. <laughs> I, a billion. Some of them no, have. 400 billion. Yeah. It's insane. You I know, mean, <laughs> you know what I'm waiting for is a K-pop group to come out with pot bellies and goatees. That would be amazing. Yeah, and they're I just can't drinking wait. beers on yeah. like a fishing boat. How amazing would that? I would, I would listen to that. And there, it's like folk and it's music. folk. Yeah, I would love that. Yeah, why can't they do that? I don't know. I or just maybe because uh, like younger girls don't like it. Yeah, Korea's a weird, uh, like, you you were there, you've been there more than I have. I was mm-hmm. there, like, maybe seven, eight years ago. Yeah. And even, like, the, 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 the before that, it was I was a kid when I went there, so I was, like, very foggy. Yeah. But even when I went back there, I'm like, oh, this is way different. Like, it changes every like, year I go. Boom, boom, yeah, boom. they're all like, about trends, fashion trends. trends. Yeah. Like, I've, I've gone shopping there once, and... and the first thing they say is, is like, hey, this would look good on you because it's this is what's in season right now. Mm-hmm, I was like, mm-hmm. what the hell? I've never heard of this. Like, I don't want to dress like what's in the season. I want to yeah. dress how I want. What's like going was a BT, what's a, what's BTS? It called? Yeah, okay, so going back to BTS because sure. my mom broke out. This is her grand finale. She She's like <laughs> Time Magazine cover of these guys. Whoa. Well, you go buy, they were on you, Time Magazine? Time Magazine. Front cover. She In the kitchen, she goes, you go buy, you go, you go. Wow. And I go, oh, okay. And I'm trying, I just, just have, I just started up website with, I have a couple of t-shirts. Mm-hmm. So I was showing her some designs. Yeah. And she was like, no, you have to be more like <laughs> BTS, like flower. She wants more flowers on my shirts. And I'm like, ah, all right, I'll look into it. But you know what? She might be right. <laughs> oh, I <laughs> she know. She might be right. You never know. So maybe like for the next t-shirt designs, incorporate more flower patterns or just put bts on it dude can and i just, do a could, bootleg and you could be your, the next like the person next to them or i could photoshop shot your myself face. into it yeah or no have <laughs> bts but have them wearing shirts of your face oh my god that's straight that's pretty great. Is that, idea. Cop- is that copyright infringement? That, that, is. is that is that infringement? it probably is but like what if you make their but, face a little different how about we okay like, so we we do them but we kind of fuzz out their faces yeah kind of blurred out yeah where people who know know but like if it were to go to court they could never prove it exactly yeah because mm-hmm. it's like so craig that's gonna be funny if you just put like people like you you and bob and everybody else that'd be sick what if it's on you, their shirts what if it's you me dumbfounded and rex dizzy <laughs> i'm down I'm, i could do that <laughs> and then we'll just Oh my God, that's God. They must be billionaires. Do <laughs> you think they're like they're probably living large, right? They're they're yeah. They've they've Man. made it. Well, you're doing well too. Let's get back on you. Right. Let's forget All about right. them. You're here. <laughs> I don't know those dudes. You're here in my room. Let's I like your room. It's nice. Thank you. Yeah, I, I like you know what, what you've done to much. the place. You know what? Most people I don't. don't need much. Most people don't need much. I feel. I don't need much to yeah. survive. Yeah. I really don't. Yeah. And when you do have it, what are you gonna do with all that? I I agree. Let's go. I want to let's because you have man, you're doing well yourself. Let's talk about you and your music. How did yeah. you start? When did you get your start? And mm-hmm. how did you start making noise on like the internet? Yeah, and, like, yeah. Getting the you know so these albums made and mm-hmm. and so on. Yeah. So I you know I grew up in the musical family and whatnot. My parents had a music store, so it was kind of I was forced to play violin and piano. Uh, like any other Korean child Me too. Uh, that ever yep. existed. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, so fast forward, um, I was playing it. I, I hated both instruments tremendously. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would get in trouble if I didn't practice, mm-hmm. that whole thing. Uh, and then in, when I was 16, I uh, saw this kid in history class, this guy named, uh, I think his name was uh, uh, Pablo, he brought in a CD of some electronic music that he, he made and he played it for the class and he was telling the teacher, he's like, yeah, I made this. In my mind, I was like, 
whoa, you can make music? <laughs> right. Because in my yeah, mind, I was yeah. always doing it, but I didn't realize that that was songwriting or producing. Oh, what did you of, think it was? I don't, I don't know. I you're just never your, thought of it because right. I, I think because I grew up in it, I never really, it never clicked in my mind that I could do this. Right. So I went home that night and I took out a keyboard that I had and I just composed like this piano, piano song, uh, instrumental, and I even like notated it and everything. Great. Um, from there, I got hooked. Uh, continued to to you know study music and uh, writing, and yeah. you know I entered a bunch of contests. Uh, in high school, yeah, oh, like that's I was. Great. I started with electronic music, actually. Really? Yeah. Like what um, kind of stuff were you? you I was doing, doing like break beats and oh. techno trance back yeah, then. Yeah, I do um, kind of similar stuff to that. Yeah, yeah. Did you have like a, a drum machine? I have a drum machine, but then I so I was doing that for a while. I entered a bunch of remix contests and things mm -hmm, like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When I was a senior in high school, I won. Uh, I, I entered like a David Bowie mashup contest. That's sick. and I won a car. I won an Audi TT in two thousand four. At the you time, were Audi. Yeah, but I told them that I wanted the money, <laughs> the, TT. Right, the TT, the TT, the TT, the Porsche, yeah, the Porsche yeah. looking one. Mm -hmm. so thanks for adding that information. Yeah, Chris. it was a small car, but um, still, dude, that's yeah. a that's like a that's a dope so car. It's thirty thousand dollar value, and I told them I was like, actually, I, I already have a, a car, a Honda Civic. Oh. <laughs> um, can I just get the cash instead? So they gave me thirty grand, and I used that money to invest into my studio. That's smart, yeah. dude. That's really smart. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, where? Okay, so you got they agreed to do that. Yeah, they, they were gave like, you thirty thousand. They just wrote me a check for thirty grand. And so, okay, so <laughs> you have this check for thirty grand. Mm -hmm. Did you go to Sam Goody? I mean, did you go to um, uh, Sam Ash? Sam not, Ash, yeah. Sam Ash, not Sam Goodies. Yeah. Sam Ash or Guitar Center? Where'd you go? Fry's Electronics? Um, so I ordered some stuff from my parents, actually, because they had a music store. There you and go. And they had access to you know distributors and things like yeah. that. Yeah. For certain things. And then for other things, I I had a friend who worked at Guitar Center who kind of hooked me up with some stuff. <laughs> Dude. Gave me a massive discount. Um, we got this mic stand yeah. there. See this mic Yeah. Stand? Guitar Center. GuitarCenter.com. <laughs> <Guitar, laughs> a lot of commercials. Guitar Center, a lot of commercials. <laughs> um, keep going. I love it. Yeah. So... Uh, yeah, so I bought bought all that equipment, uh, and then I just kind of kept working on it. I read some books saying that you know, big producers and songwriters how they got started was the internet yeah. recording studios. Yeah. So I was yeah. like, oh, if these guys did it, then why not do it myself? So I started applying to a uh, bunch of internships, and then I got one in North Hollywood. What at a recording studio? At a recording studio. Oh, to learn how to engineer. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you learned how to mix and master and do the whole process. Mm -hmm. What were some of the first bits of gear you actually bought? Do you, rem uh, did you, do you remember the gear that you first initially it, bought? It was like this audio interface mm -hmm, called mm -hmm. the Ederol. Ederol? I don't even remember anymore. Yeah. It was like a 2496 or something like that. Mm -hmm, they don't mm -hmm. make them anymore. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, and then I think I, I, and I bought like a really expensive mic. It was like four grand. What kind was it? Was it was like a, a one a 149. Damn, uh, you got that uh, from at Guitar Neumann, Center? Neumann M, M, M149. Oh, I got that Neumann. at Guitar Center, yeah. Oh, damn. What was so, what made that? Was it a condenser mic? Like condenser it's a mic? tube mic. It's a tube mic. Yeah, so it's like a big, it looks like that. Oh, my. I still, I still use it. It's still my. I bet you the quality is amazing. It's pretty good, yeah. I, I yeah. think it's great. Uh, and I the reason why I got it was because this, the recording studio that I interned at, they used it. Oh, so I, I was familiar the, with it. And you liked the quality of it? Yeah, I thought it had a good, yeah, good kind of like warm sound. Warm sound. So. Um, now, as far as uh, like other pieces of musical gear, do you remember, like, did you buy a keyboard or a guitar? I already had that? a keyboard uh -huh. um, and a MIDI keyboard. I did buy a, a, a few, I've bought a few guitars. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I bought uh, a converter, like a, it's like, analog to digital converter right and right I, right. I think that's sorry that's that supposed to be on no i no. just I, I i made a mistake <laughs> thank you thank you dude. there you could just put that i'll just put that there, there oh, you go this is no. cool it's a little sticky thing yeah it's, <laughs> like it. it's for a uh, purple mattress oh, oh we'll talk about that oh later. nice yeah. purple mattress <laughs> yeah thank you purple yeah. mattresses make sure you go to purple yeah <laughs> okay um <laughs> use coupon code yeah. stevie <laughs> 84888 there you go 
Uh, okay. What were we talking? About? <laughs> uh, were you talking about your gear from guitar? Oh, sale? gear. Yeah, yeah and you I had bought a converter. Mm -hmm. yeah. I bought like this uh, vintage guitar, uh, nineteen seventy eight Les Paul. That's what's up. A Sunburst Hell Les Paul. Yeah. How much was uh, that? I think I bought it for. It was. It wasn't too bad actually. I think it was like two grand. Oh, that's cool. Maybe. Th Two and a half, like yeah, twenty yeah, five hundred. Yeah. Okay, I think it's worth a lot now. Yeah, yeah. Do you still have it? I still have it. Yeah, don't get rid of that. Yeah, I'm yeah, gonna yeah. keep that forever. That's sentimental. Uh, until I too. like get, you know, lose yeah. everything, and then I'll no, like, you're I'm not gonna, gonna lose this. anything. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so you never went through the process of like recording on like a, like a, like a eight track recorder or something like like you, you just kind of no because that's more analog right yeah like, yeah i i have that yeah i had like at the recording studio mm -hmm. we did record on tape at certain points i like the sound of it oh it's I it's I like that. you can't beat that like sound. uh it's that the group, best uh, guided by voices uh I don't they know. they're they're from the midwest somewhere okay. uh and uh they um yeah they, they that's most of their albums are uh like in the, their basement in their yeah. house and mm -hmm. with the fort track and they just mic things up and that's it yeah that's how music should be made yeah daniel johnston recorded that way as well okay, like yeah. with just uh a tape record like a just a regular tape deck mm -hmm. like a double dual tape deck yeah and with his organ right and that's it yeah so it goes to show it stereo doesn't, yeah it doesn't really matter what you use if it's good it's gonna it be doesn't good. matter yeah, yeah. It, it definitely doesn't matter i will say though like i mean since you're bringing up like mm -hmm. tape and all that I, I think tape in my for me it you can't beat that warm sound. Yeah, Digital that, doesn't really... If, if if you A, B it, Yeah. if you were to like strum a guitar, record it on tape, and then record it into Pro Tools, like using best, like really good converters versus using maybe even like, you know, uh, what else could you use? I mean, that's about it. Like yeah. it's either digital or it's tape yeah. or analog. So if you if you were to compare the two and you just played it, it, it makes a huge difference on... I'll it's say. a it's kind of like a good comparison is like like playing a record versus a, like an MP3 or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Like there's a certain distinct warmth, qual warmth right? Yeah. Is there a balance? Can you find a balance yeah, somewhere in there? As far I as think technology tries to get closer to that. Closer, because there's more effects and, more. and there you are put on it. Mm -hmm. And it Reverb. does it does sound good. Yeah, but when you compare it, A B it, test it, there's a world of a difference. That's something that I've noticed because we used to A-B oh. test a ton at the studio that at I the studio? at. Yeah. And it, I, I was like, whoa, this is pretty in way in different. Insane. Yeah. Yeah. So do you prefer, prefer like, so do you like digital then now? Like, did you, do you, do you prefer digital now? I do. I, do, I mean, yeah. Cause it's easier and it's cheaper. Is, yeah. Otherwise I'd have to hire, you know, like with tape, you screw up, you have to like cut it. Yeah. And yeah. Reel to reel. It's just, it's like, yeah. like that's kind of. Unless you have a budget, the budget for that. Unless you have a huge budget, yeah. Okay, let's keep going on the recording. It's, I'm, yeah. I'm interested in it yeah. because this right here, this is a, I record just a, like I do a puppet show mm -hmm. and I do my little Ray songs just on this. I like it, yeah. It's a it's an eight track, but then it's a digital eight track where, mm -hmm. but then there's a mic, there, you don't even need, a, like there's a, you don't even need a mic. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, I don't know. I like it just. Whatever gets the job done, exactly. you know, it like these the days, it, yeah. it all gets the job done and, and it, you know, not everyone can afford to use to, a tape machine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So where did, so when you, okay, so where did the trajectory happen from you recording and interning at that record studio to like actually becoming your, like the artist that you've become and like getting a manager and touring mm -hmm. and doing shows and all that stuff. Yeah. So, records. yeah. So I interned at the recording studio. I absolutely hated it. I was mm -hmm. there for like three years. Mm -hmm. Um, I would clean the floors and, and toilets and, Whoa. uh, you know, okay. Went to pick up their kids. Yeah. Made wallpaper, a uh, bunch of, you know, intern stuff. Yeah. 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 And, and, uh, I got sick of it. And I, one day I was just applying for this workshop mm -hmm. by ASCAP with ASCAP's like a performance right society yeah. uh, that actually pays, they pay all the songwriters and publishers <clears throat> for, you know, the royalties, you, uh, you generate through airplay on TV and radio and movies as well. And movies. Right? Yeah. So ASCAP was doing this workshop. I applied, it's called the Lester Sill workshop. They selected 15 people. I was one of them luckily. And, uh, it was like a series of courses, like mm, classes. I damn. think we met once or twice a week for like 
four months or five five months mm -hmm. uh and and they had different guests come in and speak who are professionals in the industry like amazing uh mixers and producers and people like that yeah um and from there uh one of the people running it was a, a woman named judy stakey who was the vp of warner chapel music back then oh, that's awesome and yeah. At the end of the workshop, she's like, "Hey, David, why don't you come in and play play me some stuff that you've been working on?" And I was like, "Amazing, right?" So I went in, played her some songs, and she was like, "David, I want to sign you." And I was like, "Whoa!" It was like everything that I've been working Whoa. hard for. I she you know gave me that opportunity. Just you weren't expecting that. Um. Well, when you show, woke up that I was morning. expecting it in in terms of like. I'm going to get this. Uh, this is going to happen someday. Like, yeah. Cause I'm working so hard. hard. You know? I'm yeah. like, I'm just writing yeah. song after song. I don't know. I'm the type of person that believes like if I, I like to visualize things and yeah. work towards those, those I, goals. I love that. I love that. So, um, that's kind of what I did when I was young and so, and it helped a lot. That's I think. amazing. Yeah. So when this happened, like what did, how did your life change? Like, did you have like obviously more responsibilities? Mm -hmm. I mean, you had, uh, you, I'm, it like, wasn't anything different than what I was already doing. Yeah. Just yeah. writing songs all the time. Yeah. Uh, my contract actually, so she gave me, she, she are you allowed like, to discuss that? Right. Oh, of course. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, she gave me 30 grand. <laughs> well, the same amount. <laughs> you get the same amount. You might have a, yeah. It's a Audi. David Bowie thing. Yeah. So she's like, Hey, here's, here's if I give K. you money, what are you going to do with this money? And I was like, I'm probably going to, I live with my parents, so I'm, I'm just going to reinvest it in more equipment. So that's what I did. I know what's going to happen next for you. You're going to be offered in a few months another 30 grand. Because th it happens in threes. Three. <laughs> three. And then so you just got your middle one. Mm -hmm. This was a while ago. It doesn't matter, dude. Just stick with me. Stay with me. I'm saying in six months from now, mm -hmm. you're going to make another 30 grand. For something, it's going to be a world tour or something's going to happen. I'm telling mm -hmm. you. I'm, te I'm putting it out there on the Stevie Weeby show. Yeah, that 30 did, grand. That did not happen. <laughs> no, but it's going to happen. It's going to happen. I'm telling you right now, it's going to happen. No, but I'll, I will tell 30, you what yeah, did okay. what did happen. Okay. So I was my job was to just write songs. So I was a songwriter, producer. I wasn't singing or not, like YouTube wasn't around mm -hmm. at that time. Um, actually, it was around. It just mm -hmm. started during that time. Uh, so I I was writing songs. I wrote tons of songs. Wrote with a bunch of hit songwriters. It was really tough. I was 19 year, years old at the time. You're 19. I was super shy. Yeah, I was. I was 19. Wow. Didn't know how to interact with people. Uh, didn't really talk much, but you know, I I wrote songs. I that's what I love to do. Uh, and then the, uh, the second year passed. Um, I got uh, 30 grand. Another 30 grand. Another 30 grand for that. Oh, for year. the initial 30. For the second year. For yeah. the second year. Yeah. So you got. 30, 30. So you did 30, 30, 30. Yeah. Audi counts. The Audi yeah, counts. Yeah, Audi counts. The Audi 30. counts. It was 30, 30, 30, 30. Yeah. All right. So let me re. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to repredict. So you're due for another run of that. You're going to get another 30, 30, 30. Just like Vegas. This Boom, boom. Sorry, boom. I just burped. In threes. Smells... It's okay. I, I don't mind. I don't mind. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just putting that out there. Okay. So that's another. That's $90,000 for you coming your way. Yeah, okay. um, and I was living at my my parents' house, so mm -hmm. it was like pretty. It wasn't too bad, like. So you, know. you didn't have oh, so you didn't have your own spot. No, I and didn't. Oh. I didn't move out of my parents' house till I was twenty five. <laughs> yeah. We know someone else like that. I saved, <laughs> yeah, I saved it, but you know what I went. You know what I did. I went from um, living with my parents to buying a house. So you went. <laughs> I didn't even have the dorm apartment experience. So you went from living with your parents to like, I'm just going to buy a house. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was the, the advice of my mom. So not to live at home. I, I really, I wanted to leave my house when I was 18. I wanted to. Oh my God. Because all my other friends did who went to college. But I, you know, I went to community college and um, I was, I finished all my general education. I was going to transfer to USC actually. But you, you never ended up going, did you? I didn't go because I got signed. Yeah, I, sorry, I didn't. I missed that part of the story, but that goes to show because a lot of this crap that mm -hmm. Koreans feed their kids is, yeah. you have to go Hakyo, you have to do this, mm -hmm. Stanford, Harvard, USC, 
Yeah. You know, Princeton, whatever. But like my brother went to junior college. Mm -hmm. He seems to do, be doing fine. Yeah. You went to junior college. Dude, you bought a house and you got a record. You're on you're on a label. So like what what is that saying to these other Korean or Asian American um students or yeah. the, it's like that's all kind of like yeah when I, you say that's a lot of it's kind of like it doesn't it might be relative to certain groups of people but not mm -hmm. doesn't pertain to every kid out there yeah i you think know? when it comes to entertainment like you don't really need i don't want to you know make it sound bad to all the kids who are going to college right now but no i'm no, i'm by any means i'm not saying that because yeah i, I know spent, you're not, I yeah, spent yeah. years at asu yeah i spent like that's God a big knows. party school. I, 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 I know. I lost half I, my mind. I had. I, a, I got hooked on drugs there. <laughs> I did a. Uh, I did. A sh I played a show there once. Great. Yeah. yeah it's fun. I, <laughs> it's all blurred to me. It's all blurred to me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm speaking from experience. Right. Right. I actually went, mm -hmm. and I don't even know what I got. Mm. I just ended up going, and I'm like, oh, I guess I'll go again and live in this dorm. Yeah. And uh, yo, hack your guy. Yeah, yeah, okay, I'll go. And then, but it's like I was wasting. Not only my time, energy, mm -hmm. I didn't, I had no purpose. I had, you know what I'm saying? But like, it was an experience, a life experience, which, um, I which met you some can't. Good yeah. I met some good peoples. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, that's how I actually got into like underground rap because I would like go to the local um, venues there in Tempe, Arizona. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm happy I went because it exposed me a lot to that kind of art form. Yeah, yeah. But other than that, it was a lot of, I, I did waste a lot of money yeah uh, yeah but go, let's go back to you I yeah mean, you yeah. didn't go and you, you're doing fine i'm doing uh, that's my main point yeah yeah, yeah. yeah i think i don't yeah. think college is for everyone uh i never did well in school um yeah. i hated it so much i I, know. I didn't even do well i mean i, mean, I did okay I, I had like a 3.1 gpa i don't know if I that's had a good po point four five. Point four five. Can you? Yeah, my first. Wait, how do you graduate from that? Can dude, you graduate? I mean, that that's a whole different another podcast. Mm. That's that will take that will take hours. Yeah, to explain. I'm sure. You, yeah. Um, I'm still trying to I'm trying to figure that out. I don't even know yeah. what degree I got. Yeah. Interdisciplinary. Don't laugh at me, man. <laughs> Interdisciplinary studies. That's great. In communications. Yeah. Which is ironic because. My you're communicating, <laughs> exactly, but and you're disciplined enough to I, come up with different yeah, new it, episodes. It's basically to like just to like just to like cut to the chase. It's mm. basically something that they created for dumbasses like me who were <laughs> who were in their system for like seven years. <laughs> They're like, okay, there's this kid. We got to figure out some kind of <laughs> college uh, or department and something to get them out of our system. <laughs> Yeah. You're being too hard on yourself. Oh, it's okay. I mean, it was an experience. It was a good experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank, I like, it was I like an experience. It was, it was an it experience. It was an experience. Yeah. I don't know about good, but... It wasn't good, no. You know what? But if you didn't have that experience, we wouldn't be here right now talking about this. You know what? You're right. The butterfly because, effect. You're right, because if that wouldn't have happened, then that wouldn't have led to the... Because I... I, I uh, what's the word? Chronological. I think that things are chronological. Mm -hmm. Like, this has to happen in order for this to happen. Yeah. Then this dot will connect to this dot. You'll meet this person only if this happened. Then that way you'll meet this person. Yeah. That person, because that's how I met Money Mark and David Cho. And mm -hmm. then then we did, we went on tour. And then, you yeah. know, I got into the band. Yeah. If I did, wasn't a uh, fuck up in um, Arizona State, then mm -hmm. who knows? I, if you know I what? You could have been a miserable doctor. No, I could have been a wrestling coach at a... <laughs> I would have been a. Were you in wrestling? wrestling? Yeah, I was in wrestling too. <laughs> I, would been, I would have been a like a wrestling coach, like assistant wrestling coach at like a local high school. You would, yeah. I, I think I would. I, that would have been horrendous for me. If you would have done well in Arizona State University, that could have happened. That could have been your fate. No, you let's go know. back in a time machine. If I would have <laughs> placed in state. Because I ch always ch choked at the state tournament. Oh, okay. Then I would have been like, "Oh, I want to wrestle in high school or college," and then that's when I be would become a, a wrestling coach. Mm. I I miss wrestling actually. I did too. What weight did you wrestle? I did uh, 112, and then I went up to 119. 103. Dang. 103. Wow. Yeah, 103 pounds. Yeah. My brother wrestled. My brother was good, man. Really. My brother was okay. He was the same weight as you. 
one twelves. I mean, we're both kind of so, yeah, same yeah, height yeah. too. Yeah, I thought for some reason looking yeah. at your your pictures, I thought you were gonna be like six three. Everyone thinks I'm six three, but I'm actually. But when you got foot, out of the car, like when I saw you, I'm like, that, oh, yeah. he's my size. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's what everybody thinks. Um, yeah. But my brother was he went to rehab because mm-hmm. he was getting sober. Yeah. Senior year of high school. Mm-hmm. Um. The wrestling coach said, "You're gonna." When you come back for your senior year, I want you to. My brother was probably like 132 pounds, but mm-hmm. my wrestling coach was like, "You're gonna wrestle at 112 pounds, varsity." Wow. I want to give you time to think about it, but we need you. And then my brother ended up saying, "Uh, no. Nope. I don't want to wrestle." And that's when I got freaked out because he actually stood up to my wrestling coach. I mean, my wrestling coach is a force to be reckoned with, man. You know what wow. I mean? Like this guy is like known nationally. Mm-hmm. He's known like he's he has a legacy at Poway High there, you know, in yeah. San Diego. And so when he did that, I saw several things happen. He like stood up to him, but then he, and then he was shunned from like once you don't wrestle, and then or, you know word gets around and you're like dead to Mm -hmm. people. But then he ended up doing comedy. Yeah. Going to La Jolla. And then he, no, he worked at a, he worked at a record store, disc cafe, Mm. a a local record store in La Jolla. Yeah. He had to get change uh, for them on, you know, for their cash register. And the comedy store was like literally a block away. So he would go there just to get change for the, for disc cafe, the record store he worked at. And then he would peek in there, look at it. He would see open mics and he'd be like, end up working the door there. And Interesting, look. yeah. And then now he ended up in on TV and movie, you know, whatever. Yeah, you he's know? Yeah, so. killing it. So it's going back to what you're saying. It's, yeah. uh, you say the butterfly, like, explain what the butterfly effect is. I'm not really, like, I've heard of the term, but like I the dino, like the Like the, what is it like with the dinosaurs? Like if the butterfly, if you were to. The butterfly flaps its wings like in if Japan. A, Oh, uh, like one small thing can affect the fate somewhere. of something else. Of something else. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty deep, man. Yeah. <laughs> you never know. Like, if if your life, if you did well in school. I did it. I never did. No, but I'm saying in an alternate reality. I know yeah. it's going to sound dark, but you could have been hit by a car. Because you're going oh, to going your. Going to midterms. Like, or going like, to midterms or something. Like, you never I'm, know. I'm like, I need to make it to this yeah, test. Yeah, that stuff happens all the time. It would never happen because I sleep too much. I, I, you might <laughs> have, have to walk. You might have uh, choked on your spit. Sleeping. Because you're so s- stressed from studying too much. Oh my god, this is crazy. So it's 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 uh, every day is a blessing every that you're day, even here dude, right now, god, you're right? God dang right, my friend. Yeah. You're god dang right. But let's go back to you. I I just yeah. love your trajectory. You have such an interesting story, man. Like yeah. that's like that's a lot of pressure to be like signed at such a young age. How did you? Mentally, emotionally, like how did you um, adapt to the these um, mm-hmm. these these guidelines presented in front of you? Well, I, I remember when I got signed as a writer producer, I thought I made it. Um, little did I realize that I was actually at the bottom of the totem pole. Oh, because it's because I was young and inexperienced. There's a hierarchy and, there. Yeah, and the, and the other writers that I, I was writing with were so damn good. And I was like, damn, I suck. Um, well, how did you, like, that's a good question. How did you even learn how to write songs? Just kept practicing. I think that's repetition. what it comes down to, yeah. Um, I think there's there's two ways of writing. There's, like, the craft, like, structure and things like that, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. kind of being more intentional about what you're doing with the music. And then there's also writing just from your emotion and what you feel in the right. moment and your experiences and not caring about what, what the song looks or feels like. It's just real. You know yeah. I mean? So I think you need a little bit of both. Both. Because right? if you just keep writing from like without feeling or without any structure, it's just going to be a, it could be a 30 minute long song. And with so no what would chorus. be your typical structure? Like your a star is born like that movie, like for my lady, for, for the way that Lady Gaga wrote her stuff. Is it mm-hmm. like verse, verse, chorus, yeah. verse, verse, chorus? Something like I, that? I think generally the, the standard is verse, chorus, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus. Bridge, chorus. Different, what are the differences between a bridge and a chorus? 
I think a bridge is, man, I don't know. And just because I don't, I really yeah. don't know either. I think because it sounds the same to me. Like, yeah. even because I love, I listen to all genres. Yeah. And sometimes I can't differentiate. I think the main chorus is just something that, that is the sticky, the hooky part that people remember, uh, that kind of represents the whole song. And then the bridge is like, if you wanted to do a second chorus, that's like your opportunity to do a second chorus. Okay. Tom Petty's Free Fallen. Mm hmm. Does that have a bridge? Free fallen. That's the chorus. Yeah. What's the bridge to that? Oh, free fallen. I'm a free fallen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the. Yeah, yeah. That's like a. So sometimes a bridge could also be a break from the chorus, so that you can bring back the chorus again in a either uh, a, as a breakdown, which is slower, <sighs> wow, or something yeah. more powerful, powerful at the end, and you leave people like, "Whoa, what was that song?" Yeah, at the end. yeah. Now that formula, mm-hmm. it, it's proven to work throughout history, right? Absolutely. Like, like, yep. like, name me some examples that kind of stand out. Like, just I, I, I threw out "Free Fallen" because that's the only because I, I, I was driving in Arizona in my mom's car and that song came on. Actually, but, I, I can't, I, um, I don't know. I don't really think about songs and structure, but like, I'm sure even Journey has, you know. Uh, don't stop believing is I'm don't pretty sure believing. maybe I don't know I could be wrong but I think most songs most yeah, popular yeah. songs in general yeah have that sort that. of format yeah now when a songwriter sits to write a great song mm-hmm. is it more important to come up with the chorus first mm-hmm. or the the verses what's the most important it's the hook or the chorus right like in rap it's the hook Honestly, there's no formula. There's no formula. There really is no formula. It's, right, it's, right, right. With writing, it's like you know the structure uh, and you know what's popular in terms of structure. Yeah. But it's, you know, some people say it's about knowing that but then breaking the rules at the same time. Right, right, right. But I, I would say that structure generally works because it gives enough breaks in between. Um, yeah. And... and be, like for the chorus, like around the chorus, yeah. Is there examples of music where they break all the rules? <laughs> they don't follow any of those rules. John Cage, Queen, Queen, good example. Queen. I mean that that Queen. doesn't. I mean he doesn't have a chorus. That Bohemian, Bohemian Rhapsody, Rhapsody is a uh, kind of a great example. It's like a musical that doesn't stop. Yeah, yeah, or it, it doesn't just, repeat. Yeah, it doesn't repeat. It just. It just keeps building keeps, and building and building and building. It builds and, and breaks down and builds and, yeah. Dude, can what modern day song is even close to Bohemian no, Rhapsody? I've never I can't heard think one. Of I, I haven't heard of one in the past. In the past ten years, couple like over a decade, years, twenty years, right? Thirty. I don't even. Nothing. I don't even know. I don't know. I think Queen's the only song that I personally know that does that sort of thing and can get away with it. Yeah. Who are not so? E- yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Not even like Michael Jackson did a song like that. Yeah, Man in the Mirror is not that, is it? No, no, nothing. Beat it. Nope. Um, Billie Jean. Yeah, they they all got. What about Prince? I even Prince. I don't think he's Purple ever done Rain that. Purple Rain was pretty mm-hmm. standard. Oops. You know what? You're right. You're right. You're right. Um, what are who are some of your like? Who do you look like? What are some of your influences growing up? Like, what inspired you to the, write the songs mm-hmm. the way you do? I think when I was really young, I listened to a lot of pop music, just I mean, and classical and and jazz. Mm. That's what my parents mm-hmm. listened mm-hmm. to. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, it, when I was about eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, I think that's when like the biggest musical influences kind of. Um, you know, affected me. Uh, I listened to a lot of oldies, like what seventies, like CB oldies, w- like cho- like seventies, cho- cholo oldies. No, not cholo like cruising oldies. oldies. <laughs> I like that. I know. I I I had a bit of that growing up because I came mm-hmm. up to L.A. often, and it was like, you know, That's I don't know the good like, stuff. Like yeah. K Town during that time was like, it was a gang era with like you know Tupac and all that. Um, with, the, with Korean gangs. Korean gangs. Like the kimchi is, I don't want to, because I mean, Dumbfounded would know better than me or like uh, OG Chino. I don't want to, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, OG OG Chino would know. But there were a lot of like, you know, shootings and stuff. And (laughs) like that was the era of, 
you know, uh, just hip hop that was influenced by that, you know, what was going on in, in, yeah. in, those, in, in that, t- that time period and that place. Uh, but despite that, I was also listening to a lot of oldies because I was influenced by the people at the studio that I was interning at. Oh, so they were listening yeah, to like yeah. Stevie Wonder, Earth, Wind and Fire. Um, that's good stuff on the though, side, man. like also like, it's like, uh, I, I was a huge fan of Tom Waits. Um, oh, yeah, dude. Uh, yeah, I just, I just loved all those people. Like I love the Rat Pack. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Frank Sinatra and all those types of people. So you um, had like, you like the, the older stuff. I like the older stuff because back then, um, and, and I, I say this to people is like the recordings, it was all done on tape. First yeah, off, yeah, um, yeah, they every musician that played any instrument during that time, and, you know, you can hear the strings and the horns. Each individual player, they were masters of their instrument that they spent decades perfecting. Learning. So you can hear it, you can hear that. Like, it's different than now, I think. Like, you know, back then, you couldn't, you, you can't, like punch in and record nah, 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 nah. like Chuck Berry like you can't you yeah, know that's he, like he they, ma- the, he, they, like, he played that he like, played it from the beginning to the end like Chuck Berry like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. he's doing it the whole thing yeah the whole thing from beginning to end yeah like huh? yeah you can't and now you can be like oh I messed up <laughs> I messed up on this part <laughs> yeah let me put that in oh wait let me program just, it in yeah program it and repeat it uh five loop times it. Loop, it. loop it so that it sounds like I'm doing that because people can't tell but back then you couldn't do that, so they actually had to practice that shit and like. Oh, you have like to keep and then going. if they mess up, they have to start from the beginning. They start All from right, the beginning. The entire orchestra. You're right. The entire string section. Same yeah. with the singers. You know, yeah. now you can auto tune everything. I don't um, like that. Everybody uses it. Even the best singers use it too. I don't like that, man. And and music will never be as what it was before, before you know, auto tune uh, came a, around. There's a few reasons why I don't like that because. Yeah. Humans were flawed. Yeah. That's basically like them doing that, doing the auto tune, doing like all these programs. It's making us more like cyborg than human. That's like, yeah, we're, I, but I we're like so imperfect beings. So I want to hear that imperfection in the voice. Mm-hmm. I want to hear the vulnerability or the cracking, just a little. I, I, yeah. I could hear that stuff. Yeah. You know, I like that. Yeah. I don't know why they. Me too. I think I mean, it's rappers, important. All the rappers do that now. Mm hmm. I, I can't stand it, yeah. man. I can't stand it. I really can't. No, even the best singers when, on their on their records. Ariana Grande. Uh, it's she could sing. She's an amazing singer. I know. I'm not trying. But no, shout out to Ariana. But we, like, she we love probably. Ariana Grande, but she probably auto tunes everything because she wants to just. She doesn't want to spend all day in the studio. Thank you. Next. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Next. I'm so fucking. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's auto tuned. Yes, it is. Well, she's saying the same things, right? In the course. yeah, so you choose the best one and you put and that in every part. I I don't it. I don't know if she did that or not, but I would assume that they did because it it just sounds too perfect. It's pop. Pop is perfect. It needs to be perfect, just like K-pop. It's we're already getting down to the end. I feel like we're just getting started. Will you come back again? Absolutely. We need a part yes. Two cause, yes. Because with this man, I'm so like I really lost I track of time. Sorry, because, we got like we no, went we gotta off. No, we got to do part two and three. But I'm like, down. Just, I'm down. Like, like you got to come back. Yeah. I, I I feel like time just flew by with this one because yeah. I'm like, this is the stuff I'm really really interested in because yeah. I, I you know obviously I, yeah. I'm still no I'm and not, I and yeah, I've I'm, watched and followed followed you guys for a while yeah and yeah I, I love I, it I think you guys I, are doing it the real in the right way. Listen, yeah. I know, I know they're not gonna play my, my song on K Rock. Doesn't matter. Whatever. I do I do I do music. It's therapy for me. Firstly, yeah. it's like, it's therapy. It's a way. It's it's meditational. It's a way for me to vent. It's a way for me to get an idea. It's no different than drawing or something or painting mm-hmm. or something. You know, it's like, okay, I'll have this idea. I'm just going to sit. It, it, the, the thing is, it's kind of like, it's almost kind of like, God, it's like. You got to do it. Yeah, right? it's kind of like, I can't yeah. really explain it, but it's something. It's like, it, it like cures my OCD mm-hmm. tendencies where it's like, okay, yeah. I wrote this, then I yeah. can do this. And then yeah. it's just like, I don't know. It's just, I don't know. I, I just. When I complete something, I don't even like like listening it too too much. I do it obsessively once I complete it, but it's like it's the same thing with these th- these podcasts. Once I'm mm-hmm. done, like I'm done with it. Yeah, you know. So 
Yeah, we got to get into that next time as far as like um, just like your albums. Because, dude, you have like, don't you have a YouTube channel as well? Yeah, I didn't talk about that at all. At all. (laughs) Like you have like a big YouTube platform. and Yeah. Yeah. yeah, let, let's plug. Let, let's. I okay. want to plug that. Sure. Okay. I'm not as active on it these okay. days. Okay. But um, it's just David Choi music on YouTube. Um, I've been on YouTube since 2006. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was one of the you know the first. 2006. Mu- yeah, when, I was one of the first musicians on the platform. I got lucky with the timing. Dude, that's crazy. No, so. Yeah. And then what about your Instagram? Just David Choi music David on Choi Instagram. Music. Yeah. Um, what about your website or future show dates? So I'm actually taking a break from shows music right now. Why? I mean, I'm still doing music on the side for for okay. myself, but um, I'm actually working on a tech startup now. Whoa! It's different. I'm working on an app. Okay, we gotta. I mean, can we maybe we could uh, explore that in the future? Absolutely. Here? Like, yeah. I would love to. Yeah. Explore that as well. Definitely. Um, because that's a whole different. It's a whole different. It's like you're going here to there. Not quite. Not quite. No, is it? It feels like, it, it seems feels, like it, yeah. but it's actually not. That's awesome, man. Yeah. That's awesome. So. Uh, what is your uh, website as well? Uh, just davidchoymusic.com. Davidchoymusic.com. Mm-hmm. All right. I mean, can we, we have a, like at least five more minutes right. or no? Huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. So what are like, what are... What are the what are your like most favorite like albums that you recorded and in, in the past and like, how can people like actually download your albums? Um, so all my stuff's available on Spotify now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I've released I think five albums and some singles and whatnot. <clears throat> uh, you know, people don't really release albums anymore, unfortunately. That's so that that but depresses me. Dude. It makes me sad it too. It makes me but, so sad. You know, it's, yeah. it, I mean, yeah. It's a different age, man. Yeah. I mean, I could go on about what you just said right now, which is kind of why I'm also trying to do some other Something things, too. Oh, because of Cause the I state love, of the music? Because right I just now? love music so much. It's, it's like going a different way. Because it's my it was my job for such a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I want to yeah, keep yeah. it kind of pure and, pure. you know, uh, what it's supposed to be. Yeah. So, yeah. It's a different generation, man. It's yep. a different time, man. Absolutely. These, these kids, they want uh, the next, next, yep. next single. Next mixtape. Yeah, and that's Next why single, each single, each thing single. doesn't mean as much as as. Uh, and not only that, yeah. it's in one ear, out the other. Yeah, they're not gonna. You know what I'm saying? Yep. They're like, okay, that was cool. All yep. right, uh, what's the next yep. out? Where, where's the next song? I remember buying albums as a kid and like I, treasuring them and listening to them over and over I again. I used to smell <laughs> the. I used to smell them. Like I know what it smells. I, smell I know that smell. And yeah. Open it and. I look at the the insert and mm-hmm. read the whole, th- you know, the yep. thank yous. Yep, every single like, the, word. Every word. Yep. And like, oh, they're shouting out this group. I need to look them up yep. or, you know, this rapper. And then when you put something. it back into the sleeve, you're just like kind of careful with it. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you were, but I, I was. Oh, I was, yeah. Yeah. Meticulous. Yeah. And those days are done, man. They're done. They'll, I don't think they'll ever come back, unfortunately. I hope they do. Maybe if like all computers are destroyed. Maybe we yeah. should. So you know yeah. the future. You know what the future is gonna be. <laughs> it's gonna because now it's like no, one, they don't care about albums. Yeah. Now they're like singles, right? Yeah. Mixtape singles. Then the next step, uh, we want it just to hear thirty seconds of this song. You know what? I I honestly <laughs> yeah, think I, that could happen. It's gonna be like okay, got it. You just want a verse and a chorus. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Verse, chorus, chorus. So ten. It's gonna then it's gonna trickle down to fifteen to ten seconds. Yeah. Then it's just gonna be. A couple seconds. Yeah. I got the gist of the song. Yeah. Next. Yeah. And that's just. I think you're right. I think. Oh this, my God. Someone's going to take this recording and then in the future like, and they're going to be like, he just kind of, he told the future. And then that way they could listen. They could like download. And then not only that, they don't, it's just going to be like next, next. It's going to be programmed. Next, yeah. song, next, 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 next. And then we're done. Then we, yeah. we'll turn into cyborgs. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I man, I, well, you got to so come too. back here, of course. Dude. You no, got to definitely because this was fun. You got to come back. We I gotta, don't even we, know if we went through like we, you know what we any of we questions. barely even touched the surface, <laughs> but the stuff that we did talk about, yeah, I love talking about this. Yeah, stuff. me too. Because yeah, I inve- like just like you, I invested a lot of time and energy learning how to do this stuff or mm-hmm. like doing you know writing yep, yep. and and sitting hours and just sitting there listening and. 
and 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 studying things yep. and and now it's like it's just different it's I different say yeah i still like performing and i'm sure you do too yeah. and but i don't i don't know i mean that's why i thank god that i decided to do this as well it's just a different platform yep. for me to at least put things out there yep absolutely know, positive energies out mm-hmm. in the world yep okay so we, we 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 covered everything um all your uh social media and everything yep can we shout out your parents' um, store again? <laughs> yeah, it's Grace Music in Tustin. Grace Music in Tustin, California. Check that out. Definitely buy stuff there. Okay, Grace <laughs> Music in Tustin. Yep. Um, shout out again to Purple Mattress, right? Purple Mattress. Make sure you go. Uh, you text Stevie to eight four eight eight eight. Get that uh, free purple pillow with the purchase of a mattress. Okay. Shout out to the new patron this week. We have a Patreon um, attached to the show, patreon.com slash Stevie Weeby. Shout out to Benny B again. It's the same Benny B, but I'm going to shout. I like Benny B, so I'm going to shout it out again. Shout out to Benny B. Shout out. Um, I do have music on StevieWeebyBandCamp.com. Shout out to Sang Hong Joseph Ong, who bought all 13 of my albums on my Bandcamp. But you know the ironic thing wow. is he's done this several times. <laughs> He's, you know what? He's awesome. So he's rebought my albums. It's because he's gifting them to other people. That's amazing. So I gotta say his name again: Sang Hong Joseph Ong. Sang Shang. Wait, Sa- sorry. Oh wait, Sang Hong. Sang Hong Joseph, Joseph Ong. Ong. My new. You're chief, amazing. New, he's, he's a, I feel like he's Korean, dude. No? It sounds Ong. Korean, but that sounds like it a, could be Chinese. It sounds too. like four names in one. What Sang Hong <laughs> Joseph Ong? Yeah, right. Like or that's like, not one name. Sang Hong Joseph, maybe those are two different people. Is it? So if it is two different people, Sang Hong, I love you. Joseph Ong, I love you too. <laughs> They're getting extra shout outs today. Sang Hong Joseph Ong, if you're one entity, I love you. <laughs> sh- sh- shout out to Jaime mm. Soros for buying Collage of the Mirage. Thank you. So StevieWeebyBandCamp.com if you want to check out music. Um, I have a website now, and it's up and working, StevieWeebyShow.com, Instagram, slash Q-U-A-N-G-O-U. Make sure you check out my buddy's podcast, uh, Necro Electric, the Necro Electric podcast, as well as the homie Nathaniel's Losco Projects, right? Losco Projects, L-O-S-K-O, Projects with a Z. Is there a little right? There is no little right. This... There's no Little Ray. Little Ray is off this week. He'll be back next week. Dude, it was a pleasure, my man. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Uh, we're going to have new content. Check out P.O. Box. Yo, P.O. Box, if you want to send stuff, we're going to have new contact. Uh, con- uh, con- not contact. Content. Uh, we have a new thing. We have new things we're working on, new content. But if you want to send packages, send them to 1425 North Cherokee Avenue, P.O. Box 1391. LA California 90093 merch is at stevieweebyshow.com okay go on there buy a shirt if you don't want to buy a shirt don't buy a shirt but buy a shirt all right love you man thank love you, you too.